On today's episode, we are getting into the latest space news, including new images from the James Webb Space Telescope, big news and even bigger drama at rocket startup Firefly, NASA has concerns about Starlink, we made a mistake about the SpaceX rocket crashing into the moon, and China released plans for a fully reusable two-stage rocket that looks oddly familiar. So, let's get going. This is the space race. We have a brand new image from the James Webb Space Telescope that illustrates the progress being made in aligning the 18 primary mirrors that make up its golden dish. You may have seen a couple weeks back when the first ever image from James Webb was released, it showed 18 points of light all randomly scattered around the frame. These were actually 18 photos of the same star that had been composited together. The reason the points were so random and misaligned is because the 18 hexagon tiles that make up the Webb's primary mirror were also random and misaligned. That's not a bad thing, that's just the state that they have to begin with after a very complex unfolding process. In a new image released by NASA, we see another example of the 18 points of light composited into one image, and this time they are all still misaligned, but they do not look random. We can now very clearly see that the points in the image are mimicking the shape of the hexagon tiles that make up the James Webb mirror. Right now, we can almost think of it like 18 individual telescopes, all pointing in slightly different directions. This step, called segment image identification, identified which mirror matched to which point of light, and then adjusted the alignment into the corresponding position. We can see there is a pretty broad range of focus going on here, and the larger the dot is, the more out of focus that corresponding mirror is. Clearly, each of these star's points of light is still a long way from producing deep space images like we are used to with the Hubble telescope, but the next two steps to work towards that are segment alignment and global alignment. This will bring each of these 18 points of light reflecting from each of the 18 primary mirrors and originating from the same source into focus. At that point, the teams can begin image stacking, where the 18 points are brought together to form a single point of light. Firefly is one of the leaders of the new generation of small rocket launch startup businesses. They've so far had one launch, which was pretty successful in the sense that it got off the ground and flew incredibly well before randomly exploding in mid-air, which for the record is no big deal when we're talking about a new rocket from a new company you've got to break some eggs in this business. SpaceX still blow up stuff all the time. Anyway, that first launch attempt of the Alpha rocket was in September 2021, and the company has been pretty silent ever since. Until now, Firefly Aerospace has released an update video showing the first and second stages for their Flight 2 vehicle have passed acceptance testing. Following the failure of its first flight, Firefly began investigating to find the root cause. The cause of the engine shutdown on the first flight was discovered, and corrective action has been taken for future vehicles. In this update video, we see the flight to first stage behind Firefly CEO Tom Markusik. They also show off the full duration acceptance testing both stages went through. This update follows news that Firefly Aerospace founder Max Polyakov sold his 58% stake in Firefly to Tom Markusic for $1. What's the deal with that? Well, it's actually been the US government who are the ones attempting to out Max, who is one of Firefly's co-founders, and the feds are citing national security concerns for their actions. As far as we can tell, this all revolves around Max Polyakov being Ukrainian, and you might have heard recently about some stuff going down in Ukraine involving the Russians and a potential World War III scenario which in my opinion is a grave exaggeration no matter how many times the news media say it, but it is still a very big deal. But anyway, aside from his country of origin, we have yet to see any evidence that Max is involved in any compromising situations. He had previously stepped down from the board at Firefly to help ease tensions, but things got serious early in December 2021 when the company halted plans for their second launch after the US government specifically asked Polyakov to divest his share in the company. 
Now, in a move that shows the world he was not in this for the money, Max has sold his entire stake in Firefly for just one US dollar. Again, that's 58% ownership in a company that could go on to be worth billions in the future, all gone for the price of a bad cup of coffee. And Max is obviously pretty emotional about it. He wrote his feelings on the matter in a Facebook post. Obviously, English is not his first language, but we can clearly understand how upset he is about this, saying, quote, I'm giving up for one USD consideration all my 58% stake in Firefly to my co-founder and partner, Tom. Dear CFI US, Air Force, and 23 agencies of USA who betrayed me and judged me in all your actions for past 15 months, I hope now you are happy. History will judge all of you guys. Max, love Ukraine, and yes, I have Ukrainian passport, and I am founder of Firefly. Bye, my bird, and at the end of the days, I proud what I done for my land, soul, and heritage, end quote. I don't know about you, but I just can't help but feel for the guy. Anyways, Firefly has yet to put a date on their launch attempt number two, but it shouldn't be much longer at this rate, and we know that Firefly is also currently working on at least two additional vehicles that should launch later this year as well. In a recent letter written by NASA and sent to the FCC, they cite multiple concerns with SpaceX's plans for Gen 2 Starlink satellites. Specifically, NASA has concerns with the potential for a significant increase in the frequency of conjunction events and possible impacts to NASA's science and human spaceflight missions. They're not anti-Starlink in their messaging here, it's more like NASA outlining some points that they are worried about just so everyone is on the same page and can openly talk about some ways to minimize those concerns going forward. They start off by noting SpaceX's proposal for roughly 30,000 more objects in low Earth orbit that, quote, have the potential to impact NASA's operations and the safety of NASA assets. NASA continues to cite the risks the expansion of the network would cause to both scientific and human spaceflight missions. NASA are worried that the plan for Starlink Gen 2 satellites will have a major negative impact on Hubble's observation capabilities, saying, quote, Around 8% of composite images captured by the Hubble telescope are impacted by satellites captured during exposures. The Hubble telescope is in an orbit at 535 kilometers. This proposed Starlink license amendment includes 10,000 satellites in or above the orbital range of Hubble, a situation that could more than double the fraction of Hubble images degraded. Furthermore, degradation severity will increase as the orbital proximity of the obscuring SpaceX Gen 2 satellites in relation to Hubble decreases. I think we can all agree that it would not be great if we couldn't get clear photos of deep space. The James Webb fixes some of this, but it's not a replacement for Hubble. The two are supposed to work in tandem. They also have worries over the impact of Starlink on launch windows, both for human spaceflight and other launches, saying, quote, NASA is also concerned with an increasing unavailability of safe launch windows, especially for missions requiring instantaneous or short launch windows, such as planetary missions like Europa Clipper, which would be significantly affected due to a lost launch opportunity. Launches are already adjusted based on known objects in orbit, but the pure number of Gen 2 satellites planned will make that planning harder. In addition to impacting launches, this will also impact spacecraft re-entry. And then, of course, there is the always present risk of a collision in space. SpaceX are very confident in their claim that there is zero risk of collision with Starlink because each satellite can maneuver on its own. NASA hears this, but they still write, however, considering multiple independent constellations of tens of thousands of spacecrafts, and the expected increase in the number of close encounters over time, the assumption of zero risk from a system level standpoint lacks statistical substantiation. Again, this does not mean that NASA is anti-Starlink. They do not want to stop progress on this idea. They are still very much interested in a collaborative process that keeps space open for everyone. The letter reads, NASA suggests that SpaceX work with NASA to demonstrate the proposed capability with increasing volumes of satellites prior to each successive launch so that it may troubleshoot any issues that arise and make adjustments as necessary. 
This incremental approach would allow SpaceX to gradually prove their concept of operations and troubleshoot any issues that arise along the way. It's a controversial subject for sure, but what do you think? Should SpaceX be free to do what they want with their capabilities, or is it better to slow down and work with NASA? Hey, uh, remember when everybody, myself included, was saying that a SpaceX rocket was about to crash into the moon? Yeah, that uh, wasn't quite true. I mean, a rocket is definitely still crashing into the moon. That part is real, but it's not the upper stage of a Falcon 9 that's going to do it. Not our fault, we had wrong information, and without our very own high-powered telescope to confirm these things, we have to go with what the astronomers tell us. In this particular case, astronomer Bill Gray reported January 21st that an object designated WE0913A was on a trajectory that would collide with the moon on March 4th. Gray had previously identified this object as the upper stage from the February 25th Falcon 9 launch of the Deep Space Climate Observatory. That made pretty big news around the world and brought out the Elon Musk haters who wanted to accuse him of littering on the moon, as if nothing had ever crashed into the moon before. Anyway, uninformed opinions aside, it's not even a SpaceX product that is crashing into the moon here. It's now been re-identified as a Chinese spacecraft. Gray now says a better fit to observations of WE0913A was the launch of China's Chang'e 5 T1 spacecraft on a Long March 3C in October 2014. That spacecraft flew a free return trajectory around the moon to test the ability of a sample return capsule to survive re-entry and land on Earth. Much like with NASA's Starlink worries, this lunar collision is just the beginning of a larger problem. As the capabilities of modern aerospace vehicles improve, it's going to become easier and easier to reach lunar orbit and even the moon's surface, and that means different countries and companies will be sending more stuff. Unlike the Earth, which has a dense atmosphere that can burn up pretty much any rocket-sized object that tries to enter, the moon has no protection from space junk or renegades spaceships and satellites on collision courses. Okay, here's a fun story. China just released their plans for a low-cost, methane-fuel-burning two-stage rocket that will be fully reusable. The first stage booster will come down for a vertical landing under rocket power. The upper stage will use aero wings to fly through the atmosphere in a controlled descent before restarting engines to come down for a vertical landing. Sound familiar? Well, it kind of seems like the Chinese have been copying Elon Musk's homework, because that sounds exactly like a SpaceX Starship. It even looks exactly like a Starship from the illustration that the Chinese have provided. The concept was presented during a keynote speech by Wang Jun, president of the China Academy of Launch Vehicle Technology, a major state-owned rocket maker. There are a lot of jokes that can be made here about how China copies everything, and when it comes to fake sneakers and watches, that's whatever, no big deal. But fake rockets? I don't know. Either way, like most made-in-China knockoffs, the AliExpress Starship will not be as capable as the real thing. SpaceX is building a super heavy lift vehicle with over 100 metric tons of cargo capacity. The Chinese version is aiming for 20 tons. It's also worth mentioning that the work on the launcher is in the research stage and likely does not represent a finalized concept or an approved project. No timeline for a first launch was provided. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it, that really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.